So you sell digital products or offers and you're wondering how to run a promoted pin campaign to generate leads or sales. Well, you're in the right place, friends, because I've been doing that for years, not only for myself, but for clients as well. And if you are in that space where you're an e-commerce seller or a content creator and you're selling those digital products, workbooks, templates, whatever it is, or you're selling masterclasses, workshops, membership programs, courses, this is for you. So the very first thing that you wanna make sure that you're going to do and do it correctly is to get your Pinterest tag and event codes installed on your website correctly. Now there is a little tool called the Pinterest tag helper in the Chrome extension store that you can get and make sure that you are firing those events off correctly. I also have an entire playlist on this topic for different platforms and how to install those tags and events. So be sure to check the comments for that playlist link, and then you can just go watch the one video that you need to watch based on your platform. What I will say is Pinterest is not like Facebook when it comes to dynamic events. You cannot simply do it the same way that Facebook has it. You actually have to hard code your events on your thank you pages. So if you are selling those products on your own websites, the Shopify platform is obviously the easiest because it has a Pinterest tag app. However, if you have a, a WooCommerce store or if you have a WordPress website, Squarespace website, and you are doing funnel offers like a free strategy guide to a tripwire product, or to a membership, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you go and get those tags installed correctly. You can go watch those videos and learn how to do that exact process without all the headaches. Before we move on to the actual strategy of promoted pins for digital products and offers, there are some things that I want to walk you through. Number one, most people are not promoting directly to a shop listing. And if they are, they have heavily optimized their websites for conversions. And if you haven't optimized your websites for conversions and you're promoting direct to a listing and you're not seeing sales, chances are you need to optimize your website for conversions. So this video is really going to be catered towards people who are promoting products, digital products and offers like myself, but you have landing pages or you're sending them to blog posts or an individual landing page where you're actually selling that and doing those conversions. Chances are those landing pages have been created for conversions in mind. However, if you want to promote directly to a Shopify listing or an Etsy listing, you can do that. Just know that if you direct that traffic right to that um, listing, people are gonna click over there, but you're, notice, you're gonna notice that you're not gonna get a ton of sales because those people are not necessarily ready to buy and that is the benefit of creating a landing page like what I use to sell my offers. Let's talk about the funnel needs that you're going to need to make sure you have in place before you start promoted pins. Number one, a landing page for your offer. Let's actually just pretend that we're gonna do a free offer to an upsell of a product like a tripwire product, a template, a membership, something of that nature. You want your Pinterest tag installed on all the appropriate pages, as well as your event codes. You then need a free page that you're giving away the free thing and an email sequence to deliver the free thing, as well as a thank you page to track the events that fired for delivering that free thing. For example, in my own business, I have a free strategy guide for Pinterest marketing. I then direct them to a second page that fires a thank you event, like lead code for Pinterest. And then on that page, I'm actually selling a tripwire product for a really low cost. Behind the scenes, you're gonna need those three things for free. If you choose to do an upsell, you are then going to need that upsell page, an upsell delivery email sequence, and a thank you page for the upsell. So there are quite a few moving pieces here when you are promoting anything within ads. So you can do all of this tracking properly. Without proper tracking, you may as well not waste your money on advertising. Now that we have all of our bare minimum funnel needs in place, we have our Pinterest tag and event codes in place, 
we're actually going to jump into the computer and do a bit of research behind what this ad is going to look like. We're looking for Pinterest images that we want to make. We're looking for keywords as well as interests that we want to include in our campaign. So without further ado, let's dive into the computer and just do a little bit of insight over there. Now that we know what our funnel needs are and we have the, all of that in place and we're actually ready for research, let's actually go find some keywords that we want to use in our campaign. Now, the very first place that I like to start with finding keywords for campaigns is right inside of the search bar over on Pinterest. So I'm going to pause this and get a search term up and I'll be right back. So let's say, for example, I wanted to promote my Pinterest templates freebie where I'm upselling my membership right behind it. What I want to do is actually find those keywords right here in the search bar that I want to use in that campaign. Now, some of these search terms aren't actually going to show up in the ads manager. So that's why I wanted to show you how to find them here on Pinterest first. So however, uh, whatever however many you want to use, I would suggest starting with at least a hundred and that's going to take a long time to find here in the search bar. However, we definitely want to do that due diligence. So you might want to start with like broad keywords like Canva templates and then build out from there. So let me show you a hack. I like to take the keyword phrase and stick it in here like that. And then I like to come here and just copy and paste over like so, and then paste that in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and actually insert the word Canva templates before all of these keywords. We're not selling a business and we don't care so much about aesthetic unless you're selling aesthetic templates and then that might actually make sense. And then you just want to come in here and just put all of these in. And you don't have to be certainly like on topic for the exact thing that you're selling. So I'm selling pin templates for Canva, but somebody might be looking for Instagram templates and they may be also interested in my Canva templates. So I want to include keywords that are related. So now that you know how to find them in the search bar, let's just quickly hop over to the trends section and just see if there's anything in here that we could include that we're maybe not thinking of. So Canva fonts are really popular. That might actually be a keyword that we want to include. So I'm just gonna add that to my list. And then anything else in here, like Canva font pairing, best Canva fonts, anyone looking for that information is probably going to be interested in my templates that I am selling or giving away for free. Now, the last one that I want to show you is actually right inside your ads manager. And this is actually going to be part of building your campaign out, which we'll talk about in a bit. But I just want to show you how to find the keywords in the ads manager. So you're going to create a campaign and you're going to be brought to this screen. Choose any campaign other than catalog sales and then click this little icon right over here or the big red button at the bottom that says continue. And then underneath targeting details, you're going to come down here to choose your own and select your own strategy. Then you're going to open up this keywords and interest tab, toggle to keywords, and then you can start putting in whatever your keyword topics that you want to search are. So we have Cam Canva template ideas. All of these look pretty good, except for these canvas ones. These at the top look pretty good, though. So we're going to add all of those and then we're just going to start searching for maybe graphic design keywords because people who are making things in Canva are definitely thinking about graphic design. Thinking through these, if I like them all, you can simply hit add all results. This is the fastest way to find keywords, to be honest. If you like them all, just click that add all button. Then what you can do is you can quickly copy these over here and you have your keywords ready to go. Now, Let's talk about the research part when it comes to the images. So when it comes to the images, whatever we are doing is kind of where we want to start with our keyword research for images. So make sure you're on all pins when you search for that topic and then come in here and just see what pins are at the top of search. What kind of titles do they have? What are they giving away? Is it free? Is it paid? The reason they're at the top is because they get a lot of engagement. 
um, but we don't want it to be busy and we want it to stand out from the crowd. This one actually, to me, stands out more than these. And this one is really pretty as well. I like that one. So that might be a way that I could make an image for that. Or I could go simple. This is an ad from Flowdesk. I could go simple like this. Say hello to your new favorite pin templates. Um, so I might open that one up in a new screen. Actually, quick hack. Save this to your, um, save it to a secret board so you can actually come back and look at it later. Um, speaking of Pinterest ad examples, I do save um, Pinterest ads that I that I find that I that I think are interesting, um, and you can definitely come over here and look at some of those. And then there's also the Creative Strategy com um, a Pinterest company account where you can come over and actually see different um, pins that have been made by Pinterest that are ads. So you can actually see them broken down by ad type or ad format. So this one are this one is supposed to be lead ads. There's there's nothing on it just yet. It looks like they're reformatting this Pinterest account. Um, but you can come in here and kind of see what pins have been created for ads or for brand partnerships on the platform and try to mimic some of these as well. Um, pay attention to the titles of any ads that you do see in the space that you're doing your research in. That will be my last little piece of advice. So this is an ad, nine business tools you need to improve your processes from Ink File. Um, this ad over here, create your free plan, uh, create a free plan for your money, easily grow your business, pay attention to these headlines that other companies who are paying for ads are using and try to mimic those if possible. Um, I always like to include at least my main keyword in my ads. So want to grow your pin, want to grow your audience and in turn your bottom line. That's a really good headline. It's very much a Facebook type headline though. Anyways, I just wanted to bring that up. Once you're done with research, we can move on to the next phase. Step number four is actually building out your campaign. Now that you have all of your research in place, we need to actually create the campaign. But before we do that, let's actually go look at our conversions tab because I have something that I want to explain to you. Okay, so I mentioned in uh, just a moment ago to talk about your conversions tab. So let's actually go into your ads drop down and go to conversions. There is something that I want to talk to you about when it comes to running ads and deciding which Pinterest ad campaign type that you should choose. And it's going to be heavily dependent upon how many events that you have going on in your pixel. Now your Pinterest tag and events are going to fire no matter what platform people are coming from, they're gonna fire off and be collecting on your tag here. You can see this in your tag manager. Now, Pinterest is smart enough to know and will attribute Pinterest um, events inside your ads manager in your reporting table. So not everything you see here is actually happening from Pinterest, it's from all the platforms. Now, the rule of thumb or best practice here is to create a conversion campaign if you have more than 50 events in seven days. So you can see here I have 92 checkouts and 158 leads in seven days. So when I go to create a conversion campaign, Pinterest is going to let me choose that optimization that I want. If you don't have that, you're not going to have that here. And then that's going to fall on what kind of strategy you need to create. So to find that information out, again, you're going to go to ads and conversions. Now that you understand the events and how many you need to have on your tag, let's actually talk about campaign strategy. So you have a, num a number of different campaigns that you can actually create. There's five based on your business and what your goals are. Now, most people are only going to have four available to them unless you're an e-com seller and then you get that fifth, which is catalog sales. So in general, if you are running a Pinterest ad campaign and you do not have the 50 events in seven days on your Pinterest tag, you're going to want to run a consideration campaign. This campaign is built on a click pay uh, model. So you're paying per click. You're only paying for that click when someone actually clicks on your pin on Pinterest, not when they 
click off your, to your website or anything like, like so it's when they click on your pin on Pinterest. Now the other two campaign types are going to be conversion and catalog sales and these are really driven for events based on your goals. So if I want to run a lead gen campaign, I want to optimize for leads. If I want to run a campaign towards my membership to sell my membership, then I'm going to want to run a checkout campaign. If I want to sell products on my website or, you know, templates or anything like that, then probably going to want to run a checkout campaign. Most people don't have the ability to add an add to cart event on their websites. So you're not going to be optimizing to add to carts unless you're an e-com seller with like a Shopify store. So now that you can see kind of the campaign type and where those campaign types fit into the customer journey, let's actually talk about setting these campaigns up and actually walk you through the process. So what you want to do to actually create your campaign again is to go to create campaign here in the screen and click and choose whatever campaign type you need based on your tag. So if we're doing a conversion campaign, we are going to choose conversions and you're going to give it a name. I generally like to use a naming convention for my campaign in my ad group level that's going to tell me at the campaign level what it is I'm promoting. Then the ad group level is generally the targeting details. So in this instance, it could be like keywords and interests, whatever uh, expanded targeting, whatever interest categories, perhaps. Let's just call it keywords and interests. Then we're going to choose targeting details again, and you're going to click choose your own. This campaign setup example is very much a cold strategy where you are going out and trying to find cold new people to bring into your audience. So with that being said, we're going to go into interests and keywords, and I would suggest starting with at least some sort of interest. Now, I will say for the B2B market, I find the finance interests and the design interests to actually work the best because people like us are scrolling through those types of topics on the platform. You want to choose interests that are related to what you're giving away or selling, not something really broad. So this is not like Facebook where we're targeting people who are interested in Martha Stewart, food and drink, and you know we're trying to get to that audience. It needs to be highly relevant, which is why I'm telling you if you're in the B2B industry, chances are finance and uh, design are going to be a good fit for you interest wise. So once you have your interest chosen and you've added those in, one of the biggest questions I get from here is how big should my audience be? If you're spending less than $100 a day, you really shouldn't have an audience bigger than 10 million people. So try to stick within that range. If you have an audience of 65 million people and you're spending five, $5 a day, you're not going to get anywhere. Now, this is where we're gonna add in all of those keywords that we went and found in our research phase. So you're just simply gonna copy and paste them in. Now, I wanna to call to your attention right here where it says format your keywords in this way. So there's four different ways that you can format your keywords on Pinterest. So you have a broad match keyword fra like phrasing, which is what I have here in the box. You also have phrase match, which is a phrase that it's going to try and match you to. You have an exact match and a negative phrase match or negative exact match. So I guess there's five. What I would suggest doing when you're starting with a cold targeting campaign is actually to just start with a broad match keyword. Then as you work through the optimizations in your campaign and you're noticing keywords that are actually performing quite well, at that point, you can then go and add those back in. So let me show you a previous example of an ad I ran with keywords and we can take a look at it. So this date range is pretty wide. You just want to select the campaign and then click over to the ad group. From the ad group, you want to click into it and then it'll go into your keyword section. And then here we want to filter by the thing that we care about ha happening. So in this case, it was leads. And you can see here that Pinterest Marketing Strategies 2022 brought me five leads. Pinterest for business website brought me two leads. So what I could do is actually copy these keywords in when I'm optimizing my campaign and click create keywords and we can add those in as a phrase match keyword. So, and you're just going to add that in and it will add it into the campaign. So that's an optimization thing we're going to do later. We're not doing that right now. 
We really want to just start with our broad keywords. Now, once you have your targeting set, we're going to come in and we're actually going to start adding or removing some demographic items. Best practice tells us to not touch demographics. However, I am going to tell you and I'm going to get called out in the comments um, by some of my male audience members. I don't promote to men on Pinterest because they cost me more money and there's just not as many men looking for what I'm doing on the platform. If you find that to be true in your business, also remove men. It's perfectly fine. I will say though to leave unspecified because anyone that has an older account like mine, we have the ability to go in and add our gender details now, but when Pinterest came out, that really wasn't available. So we have unspecified for the um, non-binary or people who have chosen not to share their genders with Pinterest. Those people all fit into this unspecified category and chances are you are going to see people actually taking action on your offers based on that unspecified uh, marker. So you can see here I had one person actually purchase that has an unspecified account type in the gender category. If you're doing age restricted advertising for things like alcohol or whatever, you obviously have to check this box. Otherwise I would keep it at all ages and use that as an optimization metric later. Everything else is for optimization later, including devices. Leave your placement and tracking as all. And what's going to happen is Pinterest is going to show your ads in the home feed, the related feed, in the search feeds, in the shop feeds, and all of the related feeds. So you want it to be browse and search. Now, once we get down to optimiz optimization and delivery, we want to choose the event that we want to optimize for on a conversion campaign. If you are setting up a consideration campaign, I just want to walk you through what that looks like really quick. Add your targeting. It's going to open all of this up. And then under optimization and delivery, you have a couple of different options here. Now, most people are going to want to choose pin clicks and Pinterest is going to optimize for people who are willing to click on your pin on Pinterest. If you choose outbound clicks, they're going to serve your ads to people who are looking to leave Pinterest and go to your website. So they're going to try to find people who are more likely to leave Pinterest and click on your ad. Same kind of concept as choosing an add to cart or a checkout event in a conversion campaign. If you choose add to carts, Pinterest is going to find people who are willing to add to cart. And some of those people are going to filter through and actually sign like purchase. The reason you want to choose these um, optimization metrics very strategically is to build your events. So I would actually just default for anyone starting Pinterest ads as a beginner to pin clicks and consideration campaigns and automatic bidding no matter what. Pinterest is almost always going to beat out your, your custom bid. So if we choose a lead event, which is the main event that I actually run in my own business is a lead event. Here, we're gonna leave it automatic bidding and then we're gonna come in and select our Pinterest pins. So this is where you should have already uploaded your Pinterest pins organically on your profile before you bring them into your ad. Here's why. Your Pinterest pins, when they are, or when they are put on Pinterest organically, have the ability, even as ads, but they have the ability to be seen by a wider audience organically and within ads. If you only create your Pinterest pin as an ad inside the ads manager, so if you come in here and click this option, create a pin, you then have to be aware that people have to then save your pin for it to be seen organically. So is your pin good enough to save? Is it savable? I like to err on the side of caution and upload everything organically first, knowing that my pin it's probably savable. People are probably going to save it, but at least it's on the front end of my profile for anyone that might find it organically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and add in my Pinterest images for whatever thing that I'm promoting. I would say start with a minimum of three images. So let's just pretend all three of these images are for the same thing. Add them in. Make sure your landing page URL is correct. If you want to add a UTM code in, this is where you would do that. You put it in here. I don't really prefer to add my tracking URLs in this box. I just stick it in this main box right here. Do that for all of the pins that you uploaded. 
and then you're just going to click publish. Before we do that, there was one little thing that I blazed over in the beginning of your campaign setup. Almost all accounts now have the ability to do beta flexible daily budgets or fixed daily budgets. Historically speaking, it's always been a fixed daily budget and they will do their best to spend your full budget every day. However, they are beta testing this flexible daily budgets. So for some reason, there aren't as many people online on Pinterest browsing see your ads today. They will sock that little bit of money from today's budget away for another day, but they will do their best within the time frame that you've given them to spend your full daily budget. So some days of the week may receive more spend than others if you choose this flexible daily budgets. Just know that that is a thing. The last thing I want to mention before we end this is to set your campaign schedule to run continuously. Please don't ever tell it to run specific dates because that's going to tell Pinterest that they have very little time to show this ad to the right people. And you are probably going to lose out on conversions when you do that. They will jumpstart and spend your money right away. And then when it, get, when it gets towards the end of the campaign, there's not as much money to go around and it's harder for them to find people. So I do like, even if I'm only going to run the ad for two weeks, to just choose run continuously and monitor it. All right, now that you have your Pinterest campaign fully launched and in the world, you are not going to touch that sucker for at least seven days. It doesn't matter what campaign type you chose, you're not going to touch it you are gonna let it spend. And that means that you have to be willing to spend that money in order to see if what you have promoted is going to work because Pinterest takes time. It's not like Facebook, you can't turn it on in 48 hours, know if it's converting. So leave it alone, no touchy. But now that you know how to set up your campaign, you've waited your seven days, you're gonna to wanna to know how to optimize your Pinterest campaign. And that's why I created this video here showing you exactly the thought process that I use when I'm optimizing my Pinterest ad campaigns. Head on over there, watch that video, and I will see you there.